You're watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Hello and welcome to All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral, with me, Steve Sidwell, and of course, Joe Cole. Joining us today is uh, one of the most prolific strikers of his generation. With a total of 214 top flight goals, he is ranked 17th in the list of English top division's greatest ever goal scorers. And that is going back to when records began in 1888. Yes, we have done our homework. Um, he's a fan's favourite of the terraces and every club that he's been at, and he's also a fan's favourite of this podcast. Ladies and gents, it's TC himself, Top Cat, Tony Cotty. How are you doing, CD? Joe? All right. All right. TC, how, how are you? You okay? I like that bit of his generation, which <laughs> means obviously I'm uh, slightly older than you, too. But <laughs> Listen, I like that. But you you can, that's you've got impressive. your stats right. You could still do you've it. You've got your now, stats mate. right, Sidney. That's P what prolific. I'm about, yeah. um, look, before we, before we get into it, quick mention health wise. You had a bit of a scare, didn't you, a couple of years Touch back, word. but all yeah. good now? Uh, I'm good, mate, yeah. Like, about three years ago, yeah. I had a small bleed on the brain and, uh, listen, I don't know, stressed out, worried about things, just, just natural thing. Um, the good news is the, the, the surgeon and the doctor just said, look, it's nothing to worry about, hopefully it's a one-off, so... Brilliant. I've had nothing since, you yeah. know, but it's, uh, it's, it's worrying. Because come it's... out of nowhere and... Yeah. I remember, I, we see each other at the golf day, didn't yeah. we? And, and, and even um, you do it with Tony Gale, and he said, yeah. look, because you, you, you're quite personal, we didn't, no one really knew, and yeah. he, had to, he let the cat out of the bag to say, yeah, you've know, been going through That's this. That's unlike Gale, isn't it? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just... It, I, no, listen, some people, something happens, they're straight on Twitter, and that's not me. Yeah. It's just I deal with what I had to deal with, and that, you know, I had good family, good friends around me, and ended up had sort of, you know four days in hospital and then yeah. another sort of couple of months recuperating. But as I say, I'm all right now. So good, for good. Well, we owe uh, Phil Thompson a pint because I think... We do. Tomo that... was the one who uh, who done it for me. Yeah. You know, so he's, you know, bearing in mind Everton, Liverpool and all that. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> but no, he was. Uh, he actually paid for the doctor to come and see me from Amazing. Harley Street, which yeah. was like, you know, because imagine you, 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 you yeah. can't even get an appointment now, let alone go to see a doctor wow. yeah. or get someone to come to you. Yeah, so yeah. I owe Tomo a lot, yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Right, well, let's go back to the West Ham days because you, like, like Joe, um, broke into the first team at 17 years yep. old, scored on your debut against Spurs. Uh, I did, yeah. What was, I mean, talk us well, through... that doesn't get better than that. I mean, debut for no, West Ham no, score and against win Spurs. And win 3-0. And win 3-0. Really? Yeah. So, uh, so, so talk us to the build-up to that game and that sort of season in general. Did you know you was going to start that game? Did you know you was close to a start? Or? No, 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 no. I, I mean, I, I left score at 15, straight in the youth team, banged in loads of guys. I think I got... 55 goals or something like that in my first season as a youth team player yeah. playing in the reserves and then you had the likes of Frank Lampard Senior Trevor Brookin coming back from injury so as a, yeah. as a 16 year old playing at Upton Park you know I know we've just had all the behind the closed doors but that was sort of the original one you play at Upton Park no fans yeah. in the reserves yeah. what an experience that was in my first season and then I played for England Youth in the September I'd literally turned 17 in the July uh, England youths. So I knew I was doing all right and still playing youth team reserves and that, but I just at no stage was I in the squad. And then we got to the Christmas, obviously busy Christmas period. Um, and then I turned up on what was New Year's Eve uh, to train with the youth team on like Friday morning. And um, and John Lowell said, oh, I'm sending you home. I went, oh, what have I done? What have I done something wrong? He went, no, he said, you're in the first team squad for tomorrow. He said, go home, come back at half past five, train New Year's Eve, which we did. Um, I hadn't, I'd trained with the first, but not in the squad. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Went to the old Epping Post House, not there anymore, stayed overnight. I still got no idea. Um, I knew Paul Goddard was injured, who was a really good player. But there was a, um, a lad who played every reserve game called Nicky Morgan. Who, so for me, Nicky was 21 and I'm 17, so Nicky's yeah. got to play in front yeah, of me. Yeah. And then get to the ground, I passed one, still got no idea. And then John John Lowell called me in, sat me down. He said, do you want to play for West Ham today? And I went, what do you mean? Of course I do. Oh, yeah, so wow. and that was it. And so, I had my mum, dad, uh, girlfriend, brother, sister, nans. It was just brilliant for me, you know. So no inkling you were starting no. the game? No, which was you good though, Joe. Yeah. You think you did it on purpose? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine if he'd have yeah, told me yeah. after training on the night before, I'd have, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have slept. Mm. Because he knew it was my club, as in, you know, I supported yeah. West Ham. I weren't just, uh, you know playing for West Ham, I mean, I was a fan that was going to go and perform yeah. and against Spurs as well. It was it was our biggest game of the season in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't have slept. So he'd done the right thing. You know, I mean, obviously yeah. you have two choices, but telling me at half one was the best thing. Yeah. yeah. We've had West Ham, former West Ham players on, Marlon Harewood, Bobby Zamora, yep. Anton Ferdinand, and they always said, and Joe, you mentioned it as well, in saying that the older pros looked after the youngsters when they come in. Did you find that going back? I mean, they said that they'd done it when youngsters yeah. stepped up. Did you find it as well? Because, I mean, that was... a a tough school. Yeah, of course it was. But you had to earn the respect as well, mm. Siddy. You know, you, you had to earn the respect in your performances. Mm. 
And then, of course, you then, because it was the youth team dressing room, and then across the, the other side of the room was the first team dressing room, and yeah. the only way you could get in there was to do the performances on the field of play. Mm. And, of course, once you then got the shout to go in there, you're sort of so nervous. And, I mean, there was, like, Trevor Brookin, Frank Lampard, Billy Bonds, yeah. Bill Parks, Alan wow. Devonshire, Alvin, you know, legendary names that yeah. have played five, six hundred games for West Ham, and there's me, like, as a youngster... So it was, um, yeah, it was an interesting dressing room. But, you know, I felt that I got the respect because of what I'd sort of done in terms of my performances. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, it's all right scoring on your debut, but the challenge then is, as, we, as you know, you've, yeah. got, you've got to kick on then and you've got to stay in the team. And that yeah. was the challenge for me. Yeah. Was there anyone that you sort of had to keep, like, feel like you had to keep on impressing at all? Or did you, did it all just... Only, only the manager, only, yeah. only John, you know, John Lowe. I'd had Tony Carr, who, you yeah. know, Joe, and, you know, yeah. Tony was brilliant. So yeah. I had a youth team manager, a legendary youth team manager and a legendary manager. And, uh, you know, they was just brilliant with yeah. me. And in terms of the senior players, probably Alan Devonshire was probably the, the best one for me. Yeah. And he always used to say, ever you want to talk, come and see me. Brilliant. No matter what it's about, come and see me. That's and nice. Dev was just the most, mm. it was the best player I played with. Yeah. Like, you know, fantastic player. A lot of people player. say that who played with him. Brilliant. Said like, and then yeah. He, yeah. He, didn't he, how many times did he, did he play for England? Eight, and he played eight and times played eight for times. England. But he'd done his, he'd done his crucius. Um, like yeah. done, well, I think there's four, I'm, I'm not an expert, yeah. I think there's four and he'd done three of the four. Yeah in 1984, which you imagine what the medical yeah, stuff was yeah, like. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, West Ham sort of uh, surgeons didn't have the yeah, best yeah, reputation yeah, yeah, yeah. in the world. So he was out for 18 months and then he came back for the boys of 86 season and he was still the best player. Yeah. Yeah. And he'd been out for 18 months. But Dev yeah. was an unbelievable player. But it was it was nice for me to have a player to go to. Uh, and then as I got older and then you get to the stage where you're sort of an older player and then you try and do the same yeah. and you try and pull the kids mm. to one side and, you know, if it was Joe, like, you, you just pull someone, you know, come on, you know, don't be nervous, don't be, enjoy it. Yeah. If you want to talk about anything, you try and pass your experiences yeah. on. And I think that happens a lot at West Ham. Still got Mark Noble doing it now, so yeah. it does happen. Yeah. Do you know what? Is it, for people listening that they, and, and young footballers now, they won't be able to compute how tight Chad belief when, when Tony's talking about the first team were there and the youth team were there, that was and there was like a canteen in the middle yeah. and an office and that was it, a little yeah. boot room. But that's brilliant. I basic, know. It's and very that's, basic, but it, that's how yeah. I, you that's, see it now in terms, in terms of the youth team down that end, of the first team down that end of the different building. Buildings. You see them, different yeah. buildings yeah. at a lot of clubs now and different parts of the city. Yeah, and they've got this lovely thing. But that was the beauty of West. Reason why I signed for West Ham. And I could have got, I was like 13, 14. I, I was at West Ham and I was, I was having a look around to see what else. But I used to go in and Tony would be in the first team. Like I was miles away from it, like 13. Can we get out of the Johnny way, Joe? Come on. Johnny... Get Joe, get it out of the way. I know where this is going. Come on, come on. Just get it out of the way. I know what you're going to say. Come on. Now, they was brilliant. All, all of them. Johnny Monker, Bish. Yeah. Tony. Co and I was a young kid, but they always, they were so personal. Everyone around the place, Tony Carr, yeah. Jimmy Friff. Jimmy Ampson. And we knew there was a good young kid as yeah. well. You know, you had the you get the rumours and yeah. everyone is this young lad called even, Joe Cole, you know. They wouldn't even yes. hear it now, Tony, because nah. just the way that the way of it is, you have to actively leave where the first team was. I used to do it when I was playing, because I was always interested in what was going on, like who the new young players were, because you know, I love football. So even at Chelsea, which I think the system is brilliant, but you had to go over and ask them, sit down, and then and then you find out. But Tony, and when and even when I was in the first team. You'd go in and you'd be mixing with them. You'd yeah. sit down, come here, well, how'd you get on at the weekend? Come and lads will sit down, tell you how they got on, blah, blah, blah. Make, you know, get them to make you a cup of tea, blah, blah, whatever it is. Yeah. Really. But it was so, it's, it's such a it's brilliant hard for environment. The young kids now, isn't it? I mean, yeah. if you look at our challenge was to get from one side of the room to the other. Yeah. Yeah. The challenge now is to get from one training ground yeah. to, the, mm -hmm. to the main training ground. Yeah. Look at West Ham, we've got Chapel Lee for the kids, and then they've got Rush Green for the, for the first yeah. team. Yeah. You're not even with yeah. the players unless you get a, a shout to yeah. go down the yeah. road. Well, was it confirmed that this, that this lad was special <laughs> here on Selling Greasy that time when he stepped up? <laughs> That's where I thought he was going. <laughs> I'm trying to forget it. Got I'm it. trying to forget What's it. What's the story, Joe? Come on, I can't remember. Yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> Come on, so, so Tony kindly, for Ian St John and Saint and Greavesy for the young, for the older uh, the program where they were doing this show. It was the, show, it wasn't was the it? Yeah, show, legendary show. And they used to go every week to an academy and they get young players and then a, a first team player to demonstrate some skills. Yeah. So Tony's demonstrated a couple of these turns and, that same, and then they've picked out me. Can you do the demonstration? But obviously, like, that's my game, isn't it? I nailed it. I was like, <laughs> the Saints gone to the... 
He's embarrassed Tony there. He's done it better than him. <laughs> he I needed a shooting practice. That's <laughs> what, I didn't need a skill practice with Joe Cole, did I? Uh, it, was, it was yeah, but that was like. Do you know what? That's the most. That was one of the most nervous I've ever would have been. Been the cameras? Would well, have been how long was you? Yeah. Thirteen, yeah, twelve, yeah. thirteen. Yeah. Cameras are on, and it I had to like nail you're this. Shy what you did <laughs> when the when the balls come, you had to like. I can't remember what the term was like. Yeah. The, the little no, the inside one where you turn that yeah. way and left, yeah. but that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Showed him up. Show, showed him up. Well, look, you, <laughs> that the way. Let's move on. Look, you certainly showed a few defenders up. I mean, look, I've just got some stats here. 1986, you obviously performed a, a great partnership with Frank McAvenny. Yeah. You scored 46 goals between you. League um, goals. Yeah, 46 league, league goals. goals yeah, yeah. Uh, to finish third in the league. Yeah. Four points behind Liverpool. That's in the, Son in the 80s. Levels, that, isn't it? That is like... But hold on a minute. By the age of 23, you'd already scored 92 first division yeah. goals for West Ham. I mean, that's phenomenal. Wow. It's, it's weird because if you look back, I, I feel like I sort of peaked in my first spell at West Ham, which is frustrating in a way because I, when I left West Ham, I was only 22, I think, just turning 23. But like you say, you look back at those figures and, um, you know, again, I didn't, I didn't know. There was, going, there was on the other day about um, Declan Rice um, got to 100 games for West Ham. And I think he was 21 or something like that. Yeah. This was like probably last season, whatever. Mm. And, that. and um, he was the 14th quickest player to get to 100 games. At West Ham? Uh, yeah. Wow. At West Ham, 14th. <laughs> and I then innocently said, well, who's first? And they went, you, by a, by a, by a million miles. Yeah. I went, what? I didn't even know. Yeah. And I was only 19 and I'd played 100 games for the club. Yeah, that's phenomenal. And I just, but you just, you, you know what I mean by this? You don't have time in football. You, you sort of get in the first team. And all of a sudden, bang, 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 bang. And, and I got in, I was a regular, there was an injury again to Paul Goddard. And I, as an yeah. 18 year old, I, st I, I was 18 in a July, first game in the August, and I was a regular for the whole season. I, got, I always say I got 19 goals, 15 league goals, four cup goals in my first season as an 18 year old. And I always say to people, if you had a, a, an 18 year old now get 19 goals in the top flight, yeah. what would you be sort of paying him? What yeah. Would you well, that's, well, that's Rooney I, levels. I, I, I yeah. got Rooney 110 levels. pound a week. I got yeah. yeah. 110 pound a week. Yeah. Like Look, you, you think you, you, wow, you say that about money and, and levels there. In, in, in 88, you were the most expensive player yeah. to be signed by a British club <laughs> when you joined Everton for 2.2 .2 million. How difficult? I mean, you said they used at your peak and you were mm. playing well at West Ham. How difficult yeah. was it from? Decision was it leaving West Ham to go to Everton? No, then? Well, did did you hard. replace Gary Lineker? Tony? was that was uh, Lineker was 86, 86. But they didn't win the league. They won the league in 85 right. and 87. Lineker was there and they finished second. When that was the yeah. boy, we, we was third, West Ham and Liverpool yeah. won it. And Lineker, yeah. um, Everton was second. Yeah. So he, but they kept saying, oh, we need to replace it. He got 40 goals yeah. in one season. Yeah. So it was always like, oh, you know, we'll be trying to replace yeah. him, sort of thing. Yeah. And of course, uh, you know, I went to Everton. And again, you look back, like 22, nearly 20. I, I hated being in the record transfer absolutely hated it really yeah. why because by definition the record transfer they everyone assumes you're the best player I knew I wasn't the best player I was I was a very good goal scorer mm. and on my day I was a real top goal scorer yeah. on my day I wasn't every week obviously but I wasn't people just assumed I was record transfer he's the best player in the country now and the difficult as well I, so in the in the June Gazza had left Newcastle to sign right. for Spurs for mm. two million quid. And then right. West Ham said, well, let Tony go if we get more than what Gazza went for. And yeah. like everyone's going, hold on a second, you've got this young kid, Gazza, who was amazing, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, you know? yeah, and then yeah. there's me, who was a good goal scorer, but I wasn't technically, that was proved in the thing that we did, you know, like it was a skill practice. That wasn't my game. My game was scoring yeah, goals. Tony, yeah. scoring goals is the hardest thing to do. If you, like, uh, but it was the easiest thing yeah. for me, Joe. I always say to people, the easiest thing in the world for me was to score goals. The yeah. hard part was everything else. I, you know, running around and skills, being part of a team, scoring goals, that was the easiest thing for me. So that you speak about it there with such ease. Was that just natural? I mean, obviously you worked it in training 100%, but was that just a natural gift that you had of just knowing where the goal was at every time that you left uh, having to look sometimes uh, yeah I think all all footballers have got a natural talent of some sort you know whatever mm. position you play I was born as a as a what you would call a natural goal so I don't know where they've gone by the way because they, I mean mm. Jermaine Defoe no, one, man, wants, no probably, one wants to be yeah Jermaine's yeah. probably the last scorer, of a dying definitely. brood but you're not a breeder you're yeah. not allowed to be a goal scorer anymore but I just I was obsessed with scoring goals yeah. I had all my scrapbooks and they just Goals, 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 yeah. goals, goals. And and then I just had successive managers, Tony Carr, John Lowe, <laughs> Howard Kendall, whatever, Martin O'Neill at Leicester, mm. all just telling me, we, we know you can score goals, yeah. we want the rest of it. And then eventually, yeah. by the time I got in my 30s, I was a much better yeah, team player. Player. But, you know, in terms of the scoring goals, I knew at the age of six, seven years of age, I knew I could do what the other kids <laughs> couldn't. 
Yeah. And, but it was just the other part of the game. I was a goal hanger. That was, I was, yeah. Yeah. I was yeah, a good old fashioned in the school playground, staying there, tapping me, <laughs> make it look really easy. Yeah. And it was easy for me. But, you yeah. know, but I, having said all that, I, you know, I was lucky. My dad, I don't know whether you met my dad, Joe, but my dad was very, very um, influential in my career. Yeah. And my dad was, um, you know, just as an example, follow up with the rebounds. You know, when as soon as someone has a shot, yeah, my first thought, go for the rebound. Yeah. And my dad said, make sure you do it every time. He said, because the mm. one time you don't do it, he said, the goalkeeper drop it, and you'll go, oh, I could have scored there. Yeah. But you've got to do you know, And people don't see that you make nine runs and don't, yeah. don't get it. And then on the tenth one, you tap in and go, oh, that was easy. Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't, because I've made nine runs yeah. to get to the, the tenth one, you know. So, but, yeah. so I did work on it. My left foot wasn't brilliant. You know, my dad just hit the ball against the wall, strike it, you know. All you yeah. need is a young kid. Yeah, you need yeah. a ball and a wall. You yeah. don't need nothing else, do you? Yeah, yeah, so, that's true. So there was a natural talent, and then you've got the mental side of it, obviously, but I did have to work on things. You know, yeah. didn't, you know, as you get through, and I was small as a kid. I'm still small now, so you're small as a kid and all the big six-foot-two defenders and that, and it, it was hard, so you got me mentally strong. Well, you, you talk about scoring goals. You scored a hat-trick on your Everton uh, yeah. debut. That that must have endeared you to the in fact like the Everton fans even more. Ah, oh, it's just I mean in terms of that I mean my West Ham debut was great, but yeah. I scored after thirty four seconds. You know, like as a record transfer, the most expensive <laughs> oh. player ever in British football history. And you imagine the pressure yeah. on me. Do you it feel like just, it relieved oh, a lot of pressure? The pressure was just unbelievable. It was just in the paper, because everything was newspaper driven yeah, in those yeah, days. Yeah. It was no like Sky or Talk Sport mm. or whatever. It was a social media. It yeah. was just newspapers and, oh, God, he's a waste of money and he ain't going to do it, he ain't going to do it. So it was just constant. Um, but the, fun, the funny thing about my debut is I, I didn't even know where Goodison Park was. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, they put me in a hotel in Southport, right? And I, I was yeah. in this hotel in Southport. We'd done all the pre-season. The only time I went to Goodison was for the, the old-fashioned team picture. Yeah. So when the day come in, I, I went, I don't know how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Neil McDonald, who'd been, he, he'd actually yeah, been there yeah, four or five yeah. times. The old, he was a good player at Macca, yeah. who was at West yeah, Ham yeah. as well. And he went, oh, just follow me to the ground. So I had to follow Macca to the ground. I mean, how can you make your debut? You don't even know where the ground is. It was just, just take to Anfield, it's <laughs> the other side of the park. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, I know. But 34 seconds, at trick, win 4-0. And, you know, to be honest, I, I peaked in my first game. Mm. Again, you know, I said about my West Ham first spell. I think for Everton, that was that was the pinnacle for me. And then after that, you can only really go one way because yeah. you can't score actually in every game. Yeah. Not unless you're messy. Who was, who was the um, who was the, the big characters in that Everton team? Because that, 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 that was an Everton team that was going... It's hard for Everton fans to think of it now, but they're going for titles, weren't they? Yeah. 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 Well, they that won the league in 87, yeah. Joe. Yeah. And so when I went into the, the dress room, you had Neville Southall, Kevin Ratcliffe, Kevin Sheedy, Sharpie, mm. uh, Peter Reid... Uh, yeah. Brace well, just legendary player, yeah. Trevor Stephen, Gary Stevens, yeah. like you know, just unbelievable players. Yeah, and Good they was footballers. trying to rebuild though. So they, at the same time as me, they signed Pat Nevin from uh, Chelsea, good, yeah. player, mm. good yeah. player, Stuart McCall from Bradford, yeah, uh, Neil McDonald from Newcastle, and then they right. signed Peter Beagry, Martin Keown. You know, all the, good the players, 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 yeah. Good, yeah. Good, but there was there was a bit of animosity. I think the older players resented the younger ones, and they yeah. were paying a bit more money and a bit of jealousy right. and. As a dressing room, and I, I mean, I look at the current Man United team, got some unbelievable players, and they are just a really poor team. Mm. And I, I think, I'm not saying we was a poor team at Everton, but we didn't gel. And you mm. can have all the best individuals in the world. If you don't play as a team, you ain't going to win nothing. And that was the, the, the frustrating thing about Everton. I never won anything because we didn't have a good team. Mm. And, and like you just touched on there, would you think that was a bit of spite from the older ones, look at the youngsters coming through, a bit more money yeah. coming in, being paid. It was Yeah, and I get it as well because, you know, I mean, I signed and then, of course, the, you know, the old-fashioned Sun newspaper and, and they put, they, they put, oh, Tony got his signs forever and he's getting, I think he said something like five grand a week or something. I think, I'm not getting five grand a week. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get in half of that. Yeah. And you, and, mm. But as a player, so Graham, someone like Graham Sharp, for example, would read that and go, well, hold a sec, I've mm. just won the league twice, I won the Cup Winners Cup. Yeah. He's coming in, he's getting three times... I wasn't. Yeah. Mentally, you would think that. So there was yeah. always that little bit of resentment. Yeah. And know, it's never think. talked about in the dressing room. Like, like you, 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 don't, you don't feel obliged to go, guys, you know, because he's personal. Yeah, whatever of course he is, yeah. Whatever, it, you know, but you, you're right with the Manchester United situation now. You can see there's some form of that going on when mm. dis they're disjointed. And an interim player. manager as an well. Which you, manager. Can't, you, know, you know, you cannot it's have a caretaker nonsense. manager. They, it's, it's ridiculous. They should have left that... They should have left Carrick in charge at the end of the season. Yeah, of course he, he done great when he went to Stamford Bridge and got the draw. Yeah. Got, you know, I said it from the start. It was, it was going to be a disaster, and it, it has. Ralph yeah, Rangel. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that when you was at Everton, um, 
you, you said you had big characters. Neville Southall was was one of them. Yeah. What I mean, what was he like to lunatic? For one, <laughs> let him have sort of lunatic. What is it with goalkeepers and being uh, lunatics? Well, I'd didn't gone... he have? Hold on, didn't he have a, a sandbox in Belfield to train in? Did he have some? Was that, yeah, was that, yeah, that, yeah. Because yeah, and... I remember playing there, and it was a big, like a big, um, look like a place where the kids go and do the sandcastles. Yeah. And they said Neville Southall got it yeah. into training. Yeah, yeah. He got that in as well. Um, I mean, he. He was so. I've come from West Ham. Phil Parks now. Parks. He was six foot four. Yeah. Mm. Incredible goalkeeper, like a shot stopper. Mm. And with the ball at his feet, goal kicks or drop kicks. He wasn't. Mm. I don't mean it horribly at Parks, but he wasn't the best in the world. And then I signed for Everton, and um, so we get round to the my debut that we're talking about. Mm. On so we got we do done a five aside on the Friday. And so, anyway, the five-a-side starts, and, and Nev's playing as an outfield player. <laughs> and not only that, he's going around kicking everyone, he's sliding in and all. This is the day before my debut. And I'm thinking, what is going on with this goalkeeper? Like, he don't even want to play in goal. It was, but he was so talented with his feet. And yeah. he, he, was, he was ahead of his time. You had Grobler yeah, at Liverpool yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Grobler, I didn't think, was a brilliant goalkeeper, but he was sort of a sweeper-keeper, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah. And then you look at Neville, and you look at him now, and like they, like they almost want you to be good with your feet before you're good yeah, with your hands. Yeah, but Nev true. was just like nutcase, absolute nutcase. Didn't drink or anything, but he was always part of the team, come out, sit with the boys yeah. and everything, and a real good character to have around the club. Silverware eludes you at Everton. Obviously, you're, you've gone there to win titles, but you still yeah. scored 99 goals yeah. for Everton. Ah, uh, well, there's it a, it a couple of things. So, my Everton career, this is funny. So, Everton win the league in 87. Yeah. I joined in 88. Yeah. I was there for six years to 94. Left in 94. Everton won the cup in 95. Oh, Paul Rideout. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, it sounds a bit like my Chelsea career, to I know, be fair. I know. So, Adam, Adam, <laughs> yeah. There's a right club at the wrong time, and it yeah. just it happens in football. And it, yeah. was, it, that was, it was frustrating because I'd gone there to win things. And we, like yeah. I said, we had good players. Yeah. It ain't like we didn't have good players. We just didn't have the team. Mm. And then to leave on 99 goals, it was one of them things at the time. Um, I sort of I knew I was on 99 goals. I had six games to get me under of goals as well. I had three at the end of one season, three at the start of the next season. And it was only because West Ham come along to go back yeah. to West Ham. Mm. Otherwise, I would have gone, do you know what? I'm going to stay and try and get me under of goal. But, you know, the frustrating thing was I left in the September. Uh, Mike Walker was a manager who wasn't a good manager. Um, and he got sacked just after I left. He sold me and got sacked. Then Joe Roll came in, who was unbelievable, mm. won the cup forever. Yeah. Duncan Ferguson. So if, if I couldn't have got me under of goal playing alongside Duncan no, Ferguson, you'd have, you'd have loved you know, that, we'd have yeah. had a great partnership. And that was, so that was, it was frustrating that I didn't, had the experience with those two, but yeah. then, of course, the lure of going back to West Ham was too strong. So, 94, you go back to West Ham. Yeah. Harry's manager. Yeah. Was 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 he one of the main reasons? Was he the poor? Was it just going back to a club that a you bit of just... both. It was a bit of both, yeah. And then I got sent off on my second debut at, at Anfield. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, oh, my God. So, you're an Everton, ex-Everton player. Yeah. And um, the ball was played up to me round about the halfway line. I got Larrap from behind, as they did in those days, and the referee just went, play on. And I just, the red mist come down. The ball got played. Remember Rob Jones, the old right player? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got yeah. played out to him. And I'd done the old, as the ball, as he's playing it down the line, the old Ooh, slid in. You know yeah. what? And that's... it looked horrendous, but I didn't actually touch no. him. That's exactly, oh, my only red card was my Liverpool debut. Exactly the same thing. I remember it was down in the corner. Down yeah, in the corner, yeah, corner thing, yeah. Same thing. I, but I wouldn't, I didn't, I don't even think it was a bad one. No. I didn't lose my red rag. I was then genuinely trying to get the ball. No, no I broke out of midfield and it was Koscielny same thing and he's gone down like a sack of spuds I knew oh, I barely touched yeah, him yeah I know and he, oh, he'd the gone off on it, a oh, he'd gone off on a stretcher mm. and I'm, sometimes and it looks a lot worse than what it you know and then he comes in and he yeah, comes yeah, back no. up well you still half. see it nowadays don't you players rolling around yeah. it does your head in but anyway I didn't catch what Koscielny you're not getting a not coming on here. <laughs> <No. right? laughs> so red card, but luckily for me, it was ten yards in front of the the old fashioned tunnel. So yeah. I, luckily, I walked ten yards down there, and yeah. I, I was hanging there doing shame. And I thought, oh my god, what have you done? And uh, the, 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 it wasn't just the sending off. In those days, it was the free game ban that you got off mm. the back of it, and I got fined a week's wages. Now, to me, mm. a week's wages that for me that was mm. a massive hit yeah, as well. Yeah. Like, you know, because you needed the money in those days. Mm. So there was a lot. Like, I'm thinking, oh, what you done? And, but the suspension didn't start for two weeks. So the following Saturday, we played at home to Villa. First home game back, and I scored and we won 1-0. And I thought, oh, at least... Softened to blow a little yeah, bit, yeah. you know. Uh, had had the, the club West Ham changed in the six years from when you left to come back? Was there a big shift mm. or not really? A little bit, not, not loads. I mean, you had Alvin was still there, Potsy was still there. I'm trying to think... Um, 
wasn't too many other players. I mean, six years is obviously a long time to yeah. turn over players. You had Shirley. Shirley. Yeah, yeah. Shirley's Shirley. still there she's now. She's still there now. She's 82 yeah, really. years of age. Yeah. She's still at the training ground. Yeah. Um, Tony Carr was there. Jimmy Friff was there. Yeah. So there was, you know, more... Um, more of the um, um, Eddie Gillum, do you remember Eddie Gillum, yes. the kit, kit man? And it, so you had the, the yeah. off-field characters were still there, yeah. but the turnover in players, there was only sort of two or three players right. left from my time. But you know, it, in in that period, you'd gone from '88 to '94, you'd gone from the old Division One yeah. to the Premier League. So everything was just gearing mm, up gearing a little up, bit yeah. and getting ready for it to go. Yeah. Like we all know yeah, it has bang. done. Well, you scored 26 goals to beat league goals in two years, yeah. uh, and then you got a move to Malaysia. On a free transfer. Nice holiday. <laughs> where, 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 <laughs> it was a great holiday. Left field. Where did that, where did that come from? I mean, uh, where, where was you then? Because you would have been, what, early phase? I was 31, yeah. 31. It was... When I went back to West Ham, so I'd had me six years away and I yeah. thought, right, brilliant, go back to my club. I just stay there, you know, may, maybe get a testimony for the two spell sort of thing and I'll just mm. stay at West Ham. I don't want to leave. And I'd had two seasons back, top scorer. I got 13 league goals, got 10 league goals, top scorer both seasons. And then at the start of the third season, I got injured. I just pulled my calf mm. muscle. And in the meantime, in the summer, Harry had signed Radichoyu, Dumitrescu, Dani, mm. Paolo Futre, Ian Dowie was still there. So when, when I came back, there was five players in front of me and I was like sixth choice striker. Mm. I'm 31 years of age mm. and I knew my time was sort of ticking away and I thought, I, I don't, as much as I love West Ham, I don't want to be sitting on the bench and just picking mm. up. Your, it wasn't me. Yeah. I'm a player, I'm a goal scorer, I want to play. Um, but no one came in for me. Absolutely really? no one came in. Bearing in mind, I've been top scorer for two That's seasons long, running. Yeah. And um, and then all of a sudden, I, I got back to sort of a little bit of fitness. I played a couple of games, come a sub, I think, and yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't fit, obviously. Um, and then Harry just called me in the office, like what we're talking today, and he just went, he was laughing. And I went, Harry, what are you laughing at? He went, he won't believe this. An agent wants you to go and play in Malaysia. <laughs> and this went on for about two <laughs> weeks, right? And it was... A, Complete load of rubbish, right? So in the yeah. end, I said to Harry, look, I'm staying. He went, OK, brilliant, terrific, and all that, you know, where it goes, yeah. And then a week later, he calls me in again, and he sits me down, he went, there's another agent. I'm thinking, oh, here we go, like, it's one of them, you know. Yeah. So anyway, I spoke to this agent, all of a sudden, on the plane, out to Malaysia. I was there for 24 hours, flew back. Um, so I had my wife and my daughter at the time, and it was just like, oh, my God, what do I do? And... They offered me um, like a tax-free deal, but you had to be out of the country for 10 months yeah. to get the benefits of the tax-free deal. And it was, uh, I think, when, what are we talking, 1997? I think, it, I think off the top of my head, it was something like 200 grand net, like tax-free, 200 yeah, grand yeah. tax-free, which is a lot of money yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Back in those, for me, bearing in mind, I hadn't really made the big money. That yeah. was the one thing I didn't do. I didn't make the big money. And I thought, oh, great, if I can make 200 grand, like, that's fantastic for me. Yeah. So anyway, I went out to Malaysia and, oh, my God, it was just... <laughs> <laughs> You've been to Florida, haven't you? And you probably yeah, played in the Far yeah, East. Yeah, it's yeah. so hot, isn't it? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, and we had one game. I was sitting there at half time, and the manager was chatting. I had Steve Wicks, the old QBR man, uh, player, was yeah. in um, Chelsea as well, um, was yeah. my manager. I looked down, there was a big puddle of water underneath me, and I thought, oh, not a bottle of water. I mean, it was sweat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and I, <laughs> I, like, I never Florida. sweated. Yeah. I never sweated in a game. Yeah. Like, that was not me. Like, I'll come off no sweat, or whatever. I did the minimum amount of running, and I had this. Put the puddle underneath me, and out. I thought, oh, this should be ridiculous. But you know, we um, we had a three month pre season. Imagine a three yeah. month pre season. But oh. I went to Australia, New Zealand, Bali, Fiji, Singapore. I, we just travelled yeah. the world while we was there. And yeah. you know, I look back, think that's what I say. Great holiday, but yeah. the football was dreadful. It was, yeah. Yeah. How was you treated when you when you got in there? I mean, did the players know you? Did they know you were? Yeah, and was that, again, was, was that bringing? Was a record signing. Was a record signing. Was there any? Like said, no, Steve, was it, just, it was three foreign players. Three foreign one players. was South African, one was yeah. Australian, who okay. were good lads. Yeah. And I room with the Australian. Um, but they they was they were just jealous, you know, because you could see, like, you know, mm. I, I think the record they'd ever paid was 100,000, mm. and they paid West Ham 750,000 for really? that. So, and the most was 100 before that. Oh, yeah. So, it, and what it did do, because West Ham were in trouble, they was in financial trouble. So they got the 750 for me, but then they went and bought Kitson and Artson. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what? Harry, why don't you just keep me? Because, like, you know, yeah. listen, yeah. Kitts was a good player, John was a good player, but yeah. I still would have scored as many, if not more, goals mm. than them two. Yeah. So it was frustrating. But I went to Malaysia and it, it was a bit of jealousy and it was great after the game, you get your brown envelope and all that. Yeah. You know, just, yeah. it, it was just was what it was. You so know? It, was, it was worth the 200 grand. Well, yeah, but I came back after eight months, City. That's the whole oh, point. So I, never, I didn't get, I had to pay a big tax bill. So, like, I just got kicked from everywhere, like, but it's just decisions in football. Did you, now. um, 
was it just so eight months, one season? Yeah. Was there any I chance of staying contact, out there? Two year or was you like, no, I need no, to get back? Um, um, ex-wife fell pregnant, and in the end, she had twins. So she, right. I had seven weeks on my own in Malaysia. Oh, it was just, oh, yeah. it was awful. It was just. Mm. And then what happened was my my, my dad um, family business was insurance, and when right. I was first broke into the West Ham team, um, Steve Walford, who was the left back at West Ham, good player. Mm. And my dad had done his car insurance. Mm. And uh, anyway, this had gone on for 15 years. And then and all of a sudden, Wally was the coach at Leicester yes. to Martin right. O'Neill. Right. Okay. And, and my, uh, they were just talking on the phone, my dad and Wally, and, and Wally said, how's Tony? And my dad went, no, he's, he's having a night, wants to come home. And Wally went, oh, I'll speak to Martin O'Neill. And my dad bring me up in Malaysia with, oh, you know, Leicester interest. Oh, I'll leave off that. I said, no one wanted me when I left. Yeah. So yeah. they're not going to want me now. I said, I'll go and play for Orient or South yeah. End, one of my local clubs. And anyway, it all sort of went through, met Martin O'Neill and signed for Leicester. And I had three years, three bonus years at the end of my career. Do you know what, Tony? I, was, who was your agent? Because if you've top scorer for two years for West Ham, there must have been. A... I didn't have an agent, no, Joe. I didn't, no, yeah. I didn't have an agent. I. I, I I mean, that's, that's, that's that incredible. Is, that is, yeah. I mean, f first of all, banging them goals yeah. and not getting a move to yeah. somewhere other than Malaysia. And then, yeah. secondly, not having a, an agent as well, which. Yeah. But we didn't have an not, agent, City. Like, yeah. in those days, I mean, I did, when I went to Everton, I had an agent who'd done all that, um, a guy called John Smith, John yeah. and Phil Smith, at first started, yeah. who were good yeah. lads. Yeah. So they'd done it. But then, you know, I think with the agents, they're great. If, you, if you're moving, they're great. But yeah. if, you're, if you stay at a club for a long time, you mm. don't really need an agent because you're there and you. Yeah. Sort of, you go to Leicester, uh, after being on the losing side for three different finals, you finally get a silverware. Uh, four different finals, yeah. Was it four, four different yeah. Wow. So I had the FA Cup final, which yeah. was the Hillsborough yeah, final, yes. yeah. to Liverpool. I had the, oh, it was called the Zenith Data or something. I remember. We lost to Forest 4-3. I scored two at Wembley, still lost. And then we lost to Palace in the Simog Cup or whatever wow. it was. Mm. And then I then lost to Spurs in the League Cup final in 99. Yeah. And, um, I mean, that was just... I had my best season for Leicester. I scored 16 goals. I got player of the year and everything. I had a wonderful season. Scored three goals, two at Stadium of Light, yeah. one at Filbert Street that gets to Wembley. I thought, when playing Tottenham in the yeah, final, Joe, you're thinking, oh, it's just got to be my year. Yeah. I was 33. I think I play, I've been playing for 16 years. I've won fuck all, like, you know, and mm. I'm thinking, it's got to be my year. Mm. And, that. and anyway, um, Justin Edinburgh, bless him, got sent off. We've had a, a little... Yep. Tip for that with Robbie Savage. They're mm. down to 10 men, and I think if we get into extra time, we've we, we got to beat them extra mm. time. And then I think, was it Nielsen or someone scored in like Alan the 91st yeah. minute yeah. or something? It was a terrible game as well. Mm. And then the final whistle went, and I just I was just wallowing in my own self pity. I was I stood on the edge of the 18 yard box, and I'd be heading my hands on that. And Ian Walker, to be fair, came up and said, Oh, you know, don't worry, Tony. And Ian Marshall came up to me, my teammate, and he went, Oh, but I just wanted to be on my own, mm. you know, when I, and, and then. Tears started rolling, and I think I'll oh, get yourself a give. I was crying on the pitch at Wembley. Mm. It's not like me. I'm not. Yeah, a, yeah. I'm not that type of guy. And then all of a sudden, this arm came round me like that, and a really strong one. I, thought, I was like, just go away, leave me alone. And he went, "We'll be back next year." It was Martin O'Neill. <laughs> and I looked at him. I went, "Gaffer." I said, "I'm 33." I said, "It ain't happening." Yeah. Uh, he said, "I promise you, we'll be back next year. And yeah. We'll win it." And true to his word, we was back, yeah. beat Tranmere the following year, and that was it. Mm. But it was, you know, it was a horrible but an amazing experience at the same time. I, I played under uh, Martin O'Neill at Villa, and yeah. uh, he's he's old school, isn't he? Yeah. Um, and yeah. Wall was Wall was coach as well, yeah. Yeah. and they've got their ways. But for some yeah. reason, it, it works. It just works, doesn't it? Yeah, he's and got something in mind. Yeah. yeah, he's not a coach. He's not, no, he's no, not no, a coach. no. Yeah, I mean, it. his idea of coaching would be seeing that tree over there, run round there in thirty seconds and come back. But that was his that sort was of the coaching. Mad thing. It, yeah. it, it wouldn't be. He'd look at a, he'd look at a goal or yeah. as you say a tree or a yeah. flag and, and he'll he go, he'll go right, get there and back in seventeen seconds, and it yeah. would nail it. it, it, yeah. it, it everyone would yeah. do the sprints, come back, and it'd be on the button. Really, yeah. I reckon it was just his one. I reckon it was like 25, 16, 17. Well done. But he was, it was, it was a challenge because. Because with Martin, it was all, he was unlike any other manager I had, but a lot, it was all mental games. Yeah. And he would, you know, I think with, with the dressing room we had, we had an old school dressing room. We had Steve Walsh, Matt Elliott, Taggart, mm. Tim Flowers, yeah. Collie Moore. Like you had like some yeah. like real proper senior pros, but characters. And Martin just used to challenge you. And, and with me, he, um, he wouldn't pick me, wouldn't pick me, wouldn't pick me. And then we played at Old Trafford, 1-1-0, one, one, and I scored a goal, and then I got his respect and got in the team. But with me, he was like... Um, so the first season, I'm not in the team, and I was living in Chigwell, funny enough, so mm. I was commuting from Chigwell to Leicester yeah. every single day. Oh, <laughs> and, yeah. and then when it was a game on a, on a Saturday, so Martin would say, like, like, drive up on a Friday, say he was playing Arsenal, mm -hmm. you leave your car at Filbert Street, and then you go down, play at um, Arsenal, yeah. Highbury, 
And then instead of allowing me to drive my car and leave it on the M1 or something, I had to go all the way back up yeah. to Leicester to get my car to come back down. Really? And, and it was his way of saying, look, if you get in the team, yeah. then you do what you want. But mm. if you're not playing for me, you're no good. If he was yeah, injured, yeah. he'd walk straight past you in the yeah, corridor, very much totally like ignore you. And then, yeah. of course, I got in the team and he went, oh, yeah, park your car at Toddington, that's fine, yeah. you know, and then we get it after the game. And But if you did the yeah. business on the pitch for him, yeah. he absolutely loved you. If you were sub or reserves or injured, no use to him whatsoever. Yeah. But very much mental side of football. How much do you think playing with a young Moeski helped you at Leicester? Because oh, he he's, I, he's I, like the perfect foil for a player yeah. like you and he. I, I get really annoyed when people like, you know, if you do a dinner or something and they say, who's one of your favourite players? I say Emil Heskey, and they'll start laughing. And I say, yeah, what are you laughing at? It's, right, it's disrespectful. It? And you talk to Michael Owen, Michael Owen will say his favourite partner exactly, was Emil yeah. Heskey. He says the same. And th it was great for me because Emil was 21 and we had mm. three years together. And what was great, I mean, he was big, strong, quick, you know, and everything that you would want in the centre forward. And then he'd, he'd get the ball out wide and smash into three people, run yeah. down the wing, cross it. Yeah. I'll be in the middle, tap it in and out, and I'll get in all the, yeah. all the credit. Yeah. The mill's beating three players. And, yeah. But he was just he was just such a fantastic player to play. I loved the, the three years I had with him. And mm. he, was, he was a dream for me as a 32, 33, 34 year old in my three seasons to have a young kid like that. Yeah, yeah I bet. Doing all the work. Yeah. 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 You know, he's, he's right. Great lad as well. He's like, a great yeah, lad. yeah. Played with him, yeah. Doesn't get the respect. No, he's, no, he's he frustrating. Joe, yeah, because he deserves better. Yeah, done a lot. Of but things. it was the goals, I think. You know, even for England, for even for Leicester, Liverpool, and he, his goal return was perhaps one in every three or four or even five games at yeah, times. You yeah. know, whereas and you, as a forward, you get judged on your goals. You know, yeah. like it was me. It, it didn't matter with me if I was what I was doing. If, mm. But if I scored I'd, at the end of the season, I'd say, "Well, I'll just say I played thirty games. I got fifteen goals, yeah, but one yeah. in every two. What, yeah. you, what, what else do you want me to That's do? Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. But with a meal, if you're getting uh, say six in forty or something, and mm. oh yeah, he's rubbish because he don't score. No. And yeah. but they never appreciated the other side of the yeah. game that he was doing. The later part of your career, you have spells at Norwich, Barnet, Millwall. You have Barnet's player manager yeah. uh, resigned towards the end of the season. Was 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 coaching or management never so that you wanted to go into really? No, or? I, no I always wanted to do it. Um, even I, my careers teacher when I was thirteen years of age, and sat down with her, and she said, "What, what do you want to What do you want to be when you're older?" I went footballer. And this, this was, I was in Barking in London and, um, and she went, well, no one's ever, ever, no one from Barking has ever become a footballer. I went, well, I'm going to be a footballer. Yeah. She then went, well, what about if you break your leg? I went, well, I'll be a manager then, won't I? You know, I had yeah, 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 yeah. a 13 year old. But so, but as my career went on, I, it was always in my mind to go into, um, not so much coaching, it was more man managing and maybe getting a coach, getting coaches and me to do the, managing the players, the man managing them, that's what I thought I'd be good at. I, I never really saw myself as a coach. Um, and then that final season um, started off at Leicester. Martin O'Neill went to Celtic, done really well up there. And as soon as Martin went, Peter Taylor came in. He loved all the kids, didn't yeah. want a 34-year-old, obviously. Yeah. So I knew I'd be leaving. Went to Norwich. I was only, I'd done a bit of coaching at Norwich. I was there for about six, seven weeks. And all of a sudden, um, Phil Smith, the agent again, he said, oh, look, you know, do you want to speak to Barnett about, you know, being player manager? Mm. But I think it was more Phil's sort of pushing for me. And then, because when I sat down with him, um, I said, look, I'm coming here. I'm coming here to be a manager. I don't, I'm not coming here to be a player. I'm not coming to be your goal scorer. I, I want to be, a, I want to learn to be a manager. And uh, they went, oh, you can be whatever you want to be and mm. all that. And I'm thinking, mm, it's not, it wasn't really, mm. that, I wasn't getting the vibes that they wanted. Yeah. They, I yeah. think they wanted Tony Cotty, the goal scorer. Yeah. They didn't want Tony Cotty, the manager. And right. I yeah. was the complete opposite. And uh, I mean, we started first game, won 7 0 at home. Like, you think, oh, here we go again. You love a debut, didn't you? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you go from there, 7 0? It's Barnett's record ever score. It still ain't been beaten. So, um, and then it, the, the problem I had, I was 35 years of age and uh, looking back, I can do it now with you guys. I'm sitting and analyse it. I, I wasn't ready. I was in player really? mode. Yeah. And you can't be in player mode and talk to, you know, be their teammate and their friend and yeah. then drop them. And, yeah. I, you know, what I should really have done what, um, just as an example off the top of my head, like something like John Terry's done. You go and learn your trade, yeah. you do your coaching, you be mm. a number two or a coach or whatever. And then if and when the time's right for John, then he'll go and manage a yeah. championship yeah. or whatever he'll do. And that's what I should have done. But I think with the opportunity, I, I, I jumped at it. Listen, I, I can sit here today, I can say, look, I've managed a, a football league team mm. and, you know, not a lot of people get the chance to do that. So I'm pleased that I've done it. But I wasn't ready. I was only 35. How long were you there? 
Five months, Joe. Five months. Five months, yeah. Mm. And in, this was in the, one of the last seasons before the transfer window came in. Mm. So I left Leicester, went to Norwich, went to Barnet, and then I ended up, as I said to you earlier, about six weeks at Millwall was my last club. So I had four different clubs, four different divisions in one season. <laughs> Everyone, everyone oh, come wow. on. Oh, that's a great achievement. I went, no, I was in the Premier League when I started. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great achievement, you know? <laughs> it's just amazing how many people think it's great. I went, no, it wasn't great. Yeah. And that was it, retirement, retirement. Yeah, and um, I, I don't know about you guys, but I was, I just turned 36 and um, I was physically and mentally drained, tired. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't do no more. My, my groin was hurting and yeah. I just, I've had enough. I can't do any more. But the problem I had was, I hadn't really made, the, the big money. I'd missed the big money mm. just purely because of my age, and and I'd messed up as a manager. So what do you do? You know, and it was it was tough. It was yeah. tough times, and I'm looking. I'm thinking, looking at bank balance. I'm thinking I've got about eight nine months worth of money, three kids, private schools, all the usual stuff, yeah. and, that, and I'm thinking, well, I've got to do something. Yeah, and, and then, then just the the media. The, yeah, the I think yeah, I mean, good it, timing or. Well, yeah, Joe, but it wasn't. Um, again, the thing was, it wasn't. They come calling after me. It was. Yeah. Um, I, I I knew I had to do something, so I rang up and there was a, it was um, an old um, director called John T. Whitehead, and I rang John T. up and I said he was at Sky and I said John T. I said have you got any work for me? I said I just sort of retired now. He went yeah. He said we're doing a Copa America, which is you know the yeah, South yeah, American yeah, yeah, equivalent yeah, yeah. of the Euros, a big yeah. tournament for Sky. He said why don't you come and do some pundit work? Oh okay great. He said I'll kick off at half twelve. I went, oh, that's good. He went, no, half 12 in the morning. Yeah. I went, oh, OK. And then the next one's half two in the oh. morning. And I thought, but it was great because yeah. I went on the show. I obviously made mistakes because I, yeah. I didn't have no media training or nothing. Yeah. And, and then while I was on that show, um, John T said, I want to introduce you to someone. And it was, a, it was a guy called Ian Condren or Condo. And he was the producer of Soccer Saturday. Yeah. And uh, I sat down with him, had a cup of tea. And he said, look, I'm looking to get new people on the show. And uh, he said, um, perhaps I can get you on one Saturday. I said, oh, that'd be good. He said, he said, yeah. He said, what we do? He said, we'll get you on one Saturday. He said, uh, if you're good, he said, I'll give you a call and we'll get you back on. He said, if you're shit, I won't bother bringing you. <laughs> <laughs> but he rang me and I was on there for 20 years, yeah. so I must have done all right, yeah, you know, but no training yeah. or nothing, you know? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. First show, can you imagine the first show? George Best, um, Rodney Marsh yeah. wow. and Frank McClintock, right? Yeah. Three not only legendary players, yeah. but three guys that have been doing the media for 10, 15 years. And, and massive yeah, characters. Yeah, I mate. know, I know, and I'm sitting on a show, like, shaking. I'm 36 at the end, of, I'm sitting on the panel at the end, and Stelling's presenting yeah, as well. Yeah. And I was, like, so out of my depth, it was unbelievable. Yeah. But I had to sort of stand up for me. A bit like we're going back to the dressing room. You've got yeah. to stand up for yourself and got to try and get yeah. your points across and that. And you, 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 you know, you yeah, both yeah, 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 It's not yeah, easy, yeah, is no, it? No. Everyone thinks it's easy and it's not easy. Yeah, it's not live TV. I, I, I was trying to say, I have an argument with my wife met all the time. I come home from doing a game, I'm exhausted. She went, You're just talking about football. Like, it's <laughs> oh, no, not that love. No, it's no. Live, live TV. You have to concentrate. I'm on, yeah. I'm going to be on it. Like, I can't mess up or win. Yeah. And, yeah, well, and uh, then she you, she wins the argument. I'll go to bed. Look, <laughs> you, you both talk They're about always being, right, Jamie, yeah. You both talk about being in front of the camera. It's, let's move on to what really happened. We say it's a moment in your career that we want to find out more about. Go on. Um, and we want to know more about Tony Cotty, the movie star. All right. So <laughs> you actually featured in a uh, in a, uh, an action thriller. Final score starring Have you seen it? Pierce Have you seen it? Brosnan. Have you seen uh, it? No, but, uh, I see the sequel. I've seen it. I've seen it. I'm definitely going to see it. Um, <laughs> in the movie, you was actually executed live on air. With being, no way. Being shot in the chest. Well, you've been yeah. in with Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> yeah. James Bond. <laughs> Turn it yeah. in. This is why I don't read the notes because you need to see how happy it is. That's brilliant. So, right, that's amazing. But, but I'll tell you the story. So this is 2016, yeah. last year at Upton yeah. Park, obviously. You know, we all know they're going to last game and then they're going to knock the stadium yeah. down. All yeah. that. So, Someone comes up with a bright idea of doing a film and they're going to film yeah. it all like underneath the stands and then they're going to yeah. blow up the corner and it all gets, and all the seats get blown, all that yeah. sort of stuff. All of which was great. And uh, anyway, just out of the blue, my phone rang and um, um, there was a guy called Justin and he went, um, he went, oh, Tony, you won't know me. He said, Justin, he said, I'm directing this film that's coming out called Final Score. Um, he said, "He said, would you like to be in it? He said, I'm a West Ham fan. I'd love you to be involved. He said, we've got what it is. We can have a, like, um, um, a presenter and we're going to have two pundits. He said, well, I'd yeah. like you to be one of the pundits. I went, OK, yeah, fine. I, I didn't have a clue what, mm, what yeah. I was going to be doing or whatever. He said, I'll oh, give you a few quid as well. I went, oh, happy days. I'm going to yeah. get paid for like, you know. So it was one of them. And anyway, we, we get round to it. And um, this was obviously after the last game, the, the, the great Man United game. And um, uh, I turned up, still ain't got a clue what I'm doing. 
And uh, I said, all right, Justin. And I said, no, uh, you know, what have I got to do? He said, well, it's simple. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we're going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, what do you mean? He said, we're going to shoot you and we're going to shoot the presenter. We're going to shoot, and it was Rufus Brevitt, the other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, And Matt Lorenzo yeah. was the presenter. Yeah. He said, we're going to kill all three of you. Um, and um, I said, So well, you had to do a little bit of acting. Yeah. No, but he yeah. said, yeah. Yeah. I said, what am I going to do? He said, well, you're going to die. I said, well, how do I do that? Because I, I said, I haven't been dead before. <laughs> He said, just do it naturally. He said, but all I can say is, well, you've got one take. Yeah. And I'm thinking, one take? Like, what the f*** it up like, you know? Yeah. So anyway, what they did, they had this plastic bag attached to my chest and they put, yeah. put an old shirt on and that. And he said, what's going to happen? This guy's going to come in a terrorist. And he was, he was about six foot nine, this bloke, and he looked really, really evil. Yeah. He scared me anyway as a normal person. <laughs> and anyway, he bursts in the room and he gets he shoots Lorenzo in the head. And then with me and Rufus, he go, bang, bang. Like, so me, he hits me in the chest, all the blood spurts out, and I just go like that. He's just like... <laughs> <laughs> How do you act dead? I didn't know what to was do. There, was, there no bathroom, was, was there no mirror moments in the bathroom before no. the week building up to no, it? No, go, right. it. <laughs> but I didn't know, though, did I? Until I got here. Oh, I right, practice yeah. practice being dead. So basically, you the director's done the same to you what John Lyle yeah. did. <laughs> 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 yeah. Imagine, otherwise I would have been in the bathroom. You'd have been in the mirror trying to do it. What do you think of this, Lyle? <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, that was funny enough. I didn't get to the Oscars that year, and I yeah. think that was the end of that one. So uh, yeah, so I've tried management. I've tried getting killed in a film, yeah. and that's it. <laughs> right. Well, let's get back to we... Premier League because uh, <laughs> we know more about that. Uh, your old uh, club, Everton, they got a massive uh, win yeah. against Man United. That is big for their survival, eh? God, just a little bit. I watched the game. I don't know if you see the yeah. game. Yeah. I, I thought Man United were awful. Mm. I've got to say that. Yeah. You know, we mm. briefly touched on yeah. it. I just don't see where they're going at the moment. Yep. Just, yeah. The club is a, it's a bit of a shambles, which is a great shame because he's a wonderful football club, but they just, they wasn't at it and it was a good time for Everton to play them. A mm. um, little bit of luck with Anthony Gorms, he did come off Harry Maguire, deflected goal, but yeah. he massively needed that. Yeah. And if you look, I think, I'm right in saying, I think of the bottom eight, I think five of them won, including Everton. So, you know, it's yeah. like you get to this stage of the season, start all of a sudden, points, the, the, the teams down the bottom start winning games. Yeah. And Agger was Fabian Delph as well. Yeah, feel yeah. yeah, yeah do you know, another one who, Gets unfairly criticised sometimes, mm. you know. You know, I, 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 listen. I'm I'm a centre forward. I love watching flair players and midfield players, creative midfield players. I love watching those type of players because they make things happen. But having said that, you have to have a Fabian Delph in your yeah. team, or, or just one of those holding midfield players who keeps mm. the ball moving and everything. And you could see with him in there. You know, they was a different team, different, Everton, yeah, you know. Hopefully, I think he came off, hopefully he's not injured again, but yeah. it will make a difference. He's yeah. got the experience as well. But they, yeah. they've got, I think they got the toughest running, they haven't they? Oh, yeah. down they the bottom. They've got, um, uh, I think it's Arsenal, got, Liverpool, all of them, Leicester they? twice. Do you think they got, them, they got, Chelsea, enough, they got enough to stay up? You'd like to it's think good. so, 28 points, but, they, you know, they, they, I think I think they play Watford and Brentford as well, I think, so they're yeah. probably the games yeah. they've got to get the results in, but yeah. it's a tough run in for I them. I think they're better equipped, I don't know what you think, but I think they're better equipped playing against a team that's going to set up to try and beat you, like the bigger teams, because you've got Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin, you can yeah. simplify the game, they can, they can get hold of it running behind them, and they just need to just... The, the defence needs to be protected, the midfield need to play... Yeah. They need to play with a mindset of we, we need to be in the right position all the time because I think the back four is their weak point ever. Yeah, like, you know, Anthony Gordon's been brilliant for Anthony them. Gordon's and been out. The other thing I'd say as well, Joe, like I'm, I, I desperately want Frank to do well. Mm. I yeah. really do. do. Yeah. You know, he done yeah. he done really well at Derby. I thought he was harshly treated at Chelsea. But for any, we're talking about management, any young English manager, whether mm. it's Wayne Rooney, John Terry, Rio, mm. it could be anyone like yeah. that. You just, you want the, mm. you know, like, it's, it's someone who was such a fantastic player. You mm. want him to do well in management yeah. because if Everton get relegated, everyone goes, oh, there you go. That's yeah. why you don't have English managers and all that. Yeah, so yeah, it's important. I think we all well. want Frank to do well. And it was, a, it was a, you know, it's going to be hard for him, massive result, but just stay up and then rebuild for next yeah. season. Sid, do you think, though, I was, because, you know, nowadays, Obviously, Frank's gone into a situation that's changed dramatically yep. since he's gone in because of, you know, the, the, the financial system. Mm. But he wasn't aware of how bad financially they was in. Yeah. And then obviously with the Russian owner that they had. And, and that's so... But I think people look at it with a different perspective now. Similar to Wayne Rooney yeah. at Derby. Everyone's looking at going, well, he's doing a great job in the circumstances. They're yeah. not just going, well, it's all gone wrong for Wayne Rooney. Yeah. People could appreciate... How he's managed. Do you Definitely. think that's? I think Frank's getting a bit of that now. I think if he keeps them up, people go, yeah, that's a good job. A hundred percent. And I think now he's actually finding out really what management is like because he, yeah. he's, he's he's doing yeah. both ends. He's done the pressures yeah. And yeah. Of, of Chelsea and doing the top four and Champions League yeah. and winning that. He had the yeah. pressures of Derby at starting out, but now he's actually you know. It's, there was a big budget there at Everton, yeah, not, yeah. not down to him, but he's had to deal with that now. Mm. And if he comes through with this, he will learn in that short space of time 
tenfold. Yeah. People don't always realise how big a club Everton is as well. Oh, right? so I'm, listen, I'm not saying they're you know, big and... I'm not saying yeah, no, they're no, European no. champion, but, but you don't realise, and Frank wouldn't have realised until... I didn't realise until yeah. you get there. Yeah, it's true. You no, don't realise how mad... You, Joe, you had it with yeah. Liverpool. You don't realise yeah. how yeah. passionate they are and what massive clubs yeah. they are. And there's a huge pressure in terms of being an Everton manager, yeah. especially yeah. if you're flirting around. I, I, I don't know about you, but when I, I, I struggled... I struggled because I went up there at 29, 30 nearly. Mm. And, but I'd been at West Ham and Chelsea and I'd lived in, well, I'd be just outside London, in London yeah. all my life. Yeah. And you, you, know, you, you can get lost in London, can't yeah, you? you know, yeah. people, West Ham fans and Chelsea fans are passionate, but it's London's so big and spread out, you sort of get lost. But when I went there, I spent the no first... Escape, is no. No, no escape, I spent the it's first constant. six weeks at the Hilton in Liverpool, just had my daughter. Yeah. And every time I went out for a sandwich, yeah. by the time I got to the... Um, to the end of the road, you, the people like not no nasty things, just no. wanting to you know what's going on. Good luck, and, like, and then the Everton them. fans might give you a bit of stick yeah. and that. All, they all know everyone knows. Everyone's everyone. yeah. got an opinion, yeah. and I found it. Re I found that really tough. But then I moved to Formby, just outside Liverpool, which is a lovely, yeah. lovely village. I love that. But going in the centre, and then the people were great. The great, they just was just so passionate, yeah. and everyone wanted a piece. I don't know if you found yeah, that. The characters as well. Like I just yeah. just thought of a story. There was a, there was um there was a lad who used to come to the training ground in the old days when they was a lad in the training ground. He, he was he was called Joey the burglar. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, <laughs> this was his job. Right. So anyway, he comes in and he said about um some. Ticket. He wanted some tickets for one of the big games coming up or something, yeah. and, and I just said to him, I think Mum and Dad were away. So I went, I said, Jamie, I said, I'll, I'll have a couple of tickets for you. Like I said, because my family's not coming up, man. Yeah. I said, What do you want to do? I said, Do you want to come round my house and pick them up, man? He went, Yeah, I'll do that. I said, Well, let me give you my address. He went, No, I know where you live. <laughs> Brilliant, like typical scouse humour. Like, yeah. Fantastic, you know. Mate, they, they are brilliant. They we are had, funny. We had one geezer on the. Um, as you drove through to Melwood, there was a fella, there's other fellas on the doors and that. And it's a great big club. Everyone sees it like this, um, you know, this, this worldwide global club. But the fellas on the doors are lads from Liverpool. And every morning, it, it, like, it, it try and sell you something, see, yeah. right? So, it was a tough time for me up there. I was going into training, but I was like that. About eight in the eight I used to get in early. Yeah. He's coming over, oh, what's he want to sell me today, right? I've gone like that. I've gone, all right, lad, how you doing? You know, I've got something for you. He's went back into his porter cabin, got on it out, he's got a brochure. He showed me a picture of an Alsatian. He went, <laughs> guard dogs. <laughs> I went, oh, mate, just listen, I can't be buying no guard dogs. It's 8.30 in the morning. Let me have my breakfast first. <laughs> But he was, just selling, he was just selling me something every, every but he's morning. he's so passionate. Yeah. He's yeah. up there. Yeah. Right? So, and Frank will be getting that now. But yeah. uh, you know, we wish him well. We really yeah. wish him well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we talk about Liverpool. I, we're just coming off the back of the Man City game, 2-2. Two, two. Mm. I'm sure you two watched it. Yeah. No, I, I was coming back from Brentford, West Ham. One of the mm. big game of the oh, weekend. Well, I was coming okay. back. I see the highlights, City. I well, see the highlights. What, I mean, yeah. we've got it to speak about the game, game because yeah. we talk about the elite players, individuals oh. and the teams. I mean, what? What a game for the Premier League. What a game, what a game. Yeah. What, um, one thing that surprised me was I thought Man City were the best side, but it, how much I felt it was Man City were in control. Yeah. I know they finished 2 all, and I think that's a great result for, for Liverpool. Be better yeah. result for Liverpool or Man City? I think it's a better result for Liverpool because yeah. they should have lost the game. I thought Man City controlled the game. Yeah. Pep looked like... Like we're talking about just before the thing, Cancelo. Like, what, what position does he play? Because he was like doing things with the ball. He's right? reinvented the fullback oh, position, hasn't he? It's like unbelievable. The way that they play Man City, I thought they were outstanding. I was surprised at how much better they was on the day. I know, but then again, that's you have to give credit to Klopp and Liverpool players to, to come out of there with a draw. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's yeah. a, just you, a great game of football. Yeah. Do you think that still puts City in the driving seat? Who's your fan, terms who's of the, fancy if for If you league? look at the fixtures left, the mm. City have got the easier fixtures. Yeah. No doubt yeah. about that. But, and there's a big but, the dream is the Champions League for them. That yeah. is the, that is yeah. the, you know, that's yeah. the holy grail for them because, you know, Liverpool won the Champions League and they, yeah. for City there's massive pressure yeah. on Pet and the players to win the Champions and League. They and they might get distracted with the league games. That's mm. the only thing I'm thinking. If you look at, on paper, I know football's not played on paper, on paper, they've got the easy running number. Yeah, they? yeah and, and also the semi-final this weekend, they played yeah, it. Big and, games and, well, it. And what happens when you get to this stage of the season and these games like the weekend, emotionally and mentally, that would take, that's like playing two games on yeah. their legs. Like yeah. you see now how much the West Ham game affect, that big West Ham game against yeah, Leon yeah. Yeah. affected them players yeah. and they didn't turn up on Sunday. Yeah. You did the game tone. Yeah. Like, so, 
Man City, I feel, I feel a, a slightly stronger squad as well to oh, deal yeah, with no, that. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. so I, I but think they've got tough yeah, coming up. And they yeah. Week. Was it Atletico? Is it? Is it? City, yeah, yeah, Atletico yeah, yeah. That's Liverpool, that's written, another emotional through, game. Though, well, so. I mean, Liverpool's next game is is against United. Yeah. So but I mean, United, won't see, yeah, United need to step up. I mean, yeah. they to to you say disgraceful mm. against Everton. Yeah. Do you feel they can bounce back? Is it at Liverpool? At Liverpool? Uh, it's at uh, United, I think. At United, yeah. Oh, Liverpool at home. Liverpool, Liverpool at home. Liverpool at home, yeah. yeah. Oh, you've got fancy Liverpool, yeah. I got, yeah. I, I, United are just all over the place at the moment. You, 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 Gary, uh, I think Gary... Games, yeah. you normally, games like that, sorry, Joe, didn't game on, like that, you'd have United, you'd say, oh, that's a tough game. It's not going to be as tough a game. No. Everton at the moment, they're fighting for their lives. Liverpool got player. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, mm. it's, it's, it's some tough games, but... I think you're right. I think the, the, the sort of the midweek European games and the semi final at the mm. weekend will have a big influence on what goes on. Mm. All right, let's give you some coral odds. United versus Liverpool. United to win and both teams to score is eight to one. Uh, the top four race, Arsenal now two to one to finish in the top four. Joe, you're back in Arsenal. Um, and top yeah. number one to three. Oh, he's got to stick by him. Stick by him, Tony. Like, that's the problem with media. They can just go back and yeah. listen to episodes. Well, you've got fancy Spurs at the moment. Spurs are yeah, yeah, one yeah, to yeah. three on now yeah. to finish in the, uh, in the yeah. top four. So... Um, right, Super Series, the FA Cup semi-final. Chelsea versus Palace is the pick of the Coral Super Series this week. I'm going to ask you both uh, four 12, questions. 12 all, Sid. The score guess. is 12 all between yeah. Joe and the guest. Right. right. I'm going to ask you four questions about the game. Quick fire answers. Um, so, yeah, it's the first time it's actually been level pegged now because yeah. you've been leading. So it, yeah. We're at 12 all, so TC needs you here. <laughs> no pressure. Right, so it's the FA Cup semi-final. Chelsea versus Palace. Who will win the match? Chelsea. Chelsea. Okay, who will score the first goal? Big game, Havertz. Big game player. Yeah. Werner, Timo Werner. Oof, okay, how many corners will there be? Go on, you go first, Tom. Yeah. Uh, but you got this right the last yeah, few times. Did I? I'll go for a few, Chelsea. No, but I'll go eight. Eight? I'll go nine. Nine. Is okay. that why you did it? So it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy it, yeah. uh, and lastly, how many players will be carded? How many cards in the game? Um, Palace, do you know what? If Palace do what they did against Arsenal, which you'd like to think they yeah. need to do to get mm. a result, there might be a few cards. So I'm going to go five. Yeah, I'll go three. Okay, all right, it's on the line. So remember at home, if you want to get involved, you can do it. It's really easy. Just head over to coral.co.uk, answer the questions correctly to win cash prizes, but please, please gamble responsibly. Um, right, TC, that's it. That's all we've got time for, mate. It's, I've been enjoying it. It's been yeah, a pleasure. We've got pleasure. Yeah. Well, we're I mean, we, can, we, can, we can just uh, pull <laughs> one here if you want. Okay, yeah, um, no, I've really enjoyed it. Thanks, thanks for Thanks ever so much for coming on. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's, the next, what's the next up in the plans? Uh, any... Flying to Leon, Thursday morning. Lovely. The game. Oh, you're nice. Right. Yeah, and I'm, I'm flying, jealous, time. flying back in after, straight after the game. You're not going now, Joe? No, we... Um, I'm doing it from the studios oh, and a a I'm very, yeah. very disappointed yeah. if the bosses are listening. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Seville, which was great. You know, I loved it out there. It was if. really good. And, you know, West Ham have got to step up. Yeah. And the, the problem with West Ham is we're all dreaming about the, the semi-final, which is obviously either Frankfurt, mm. who they played 76 semi-final yeah. many yeah. years ago, or Barcelona. And that's the problem with West Ham, you always think in the next game, yeah. mm. the, the next game never comes as a West Ham but fan. But I, so. I, I think, if you'd have asked me the question Thursday night, I, I'm completely neutral. What team and what squad of players would I want to be managing going into a second leg? It would be the West Ham. Oh, all day long. Yeah. All day long. Yeah. I genuinely think it's not. A, I didn't see anything. We were both at the game yeah. last week. I didn't yeah. see anything to scare me, but it's all about on the day. And if they if they turn up West Ham and get through, then we can all look forward to the semi-final. You might get yeah. a little trip out there and oh, the semi-final. No, I will, Tony. I'm, I'm <laughs> right. looking you will. Uh, you 100%. will. 100%. We definitely. come back from America without a suntan, so yeah. you might get one when he goes there. Um, right, remember, you can find us on the Joe YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcast from. You have been listening to All To Play For Abort to you by Joe and Coral. We'll see you soon. You've been watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral.